Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Run All Night. This movie is directed by Juan Colet Serra, who previously directed Nonstop and Unknown. This movie stars Liam Neeson, Joel Kinnaman, and Ed Harris. Liam Neeson and Ed Harris play two men named Jimmy and Sean, guys that have been best friends since they were children. They share a bond, almost like a brotherhood. But when Jimmy's son Michael's in the wrong place at the wrong time, he almost gets killed. So Jimmy defends his son, but by doing so, he ends up killing Sean's son, Danny. So now the bond they share is shattered. Now Jimmy and his son must survive the night and all the vengeance and danger that come with it. Liam Neeson is really good in this movie. I'm glad he didn't play a character that was a guy from a shady past that tried to be a nice guy. I liked how he wasn't afraid to be what he is. An alcoholic who has had a bad past that's killed people. And he doesn't try to hide the fact that he's a criminal. His chemistry with Ed Harris is really good. Ed Harris was in this movie for a lot more than I thought he would be, and he was worth every second of it, because the chemistry between these two guys is really, really good. Joel Kinnaman, he's okay as an actor, but he was pretty good in this movie. For a son that had gone without his father for five years, who really wanted nothing to do with him, he portrayed that pretty well. Also, Common was really good in this movie. He plays the hitman that Ed Harris sends after the two guys. And then was like the Terminator. He was pretty good. He also had a bunch of familiar faces in this movie as well. Uh, Genesis Rodriguez, the chick from uh, Men on Ledge, who played uh, Michael's wife. Vincent D'Onofrio, who played a cop who kind of wants to help Jimmy, but at the same time just wants to put him away more than anything. And also, a uh, surprise cameo, but I'm not going to say who it is. He showed up in this movie. I was surprised, but he, he was pretty good. And then uh, Hulk McNally. He's a guy that usually plays his henchman-type roles. Who uh, He did a good job. It was good to see that he's actually doing something again. Also, Bruce McGill's in this movie. Why? I really don't know, because he has no lines of dialogue, but he plays his role well for what it was. Surprised by with this movie, and what I enjoyed the most, was that it wasn't just a simple action movie. It wasn't like 16 Blocks, where you had good guys running from bad guys with a bunch of characters you just don't care about. This movie was darker than I thought it would be, more serious, and it wasn't just an action movie. You had bits of comedy in there. You had elements that made this everything that I'm glad it wasn't. I liked the brotherhood between Liam Neeson and Ned Harris, the father-son relationship between Liam Neeson and Joel Kinnaman. All that stuff was there, and it added to the story. Also, something that impressed me was the transitions between the scenes and locations. You'd go from one bar to this guy's house, but it would do like this 3D camera thing. It was pretty cool, and it was something you don't expect from a movie like this. So this movie had cool action. The end credits were pretty good. The movie was emotional. It was believable. The acting was really good. And this was probably the best collaboration between Liam Neeson and Juan Colesera since nonstop. Actually, it's the only movie they've done since nonstop. What am I saying? <laughs> so go check out One on Night, guys. I'm going to give One on Night an A-. minus. There were some things in the movie that I could have just done without, and like I said, the movie was about 10 minutes too long, but the movie was good, and it was enjoyable, and it's a movie that you'll actually remember and not forget about a week later. So until next time, guys, see ya.